Today I'm going to show you a robbery where a knife was used to successfully defend against another knife and a gun. So we've got a robbery at a jewelry store. Now the jeweler is working in the back room and you're about to see the daughter of the owner trying to get away from the other robbers by getting behind this door. There's two robbers, one with a knife, one with a gun. Now you can see she just doesn't get it closed in time before the guy with the knife powers his way through the door. The jeweler has a gun in his desk drawer, but he can't get to it in time. Now look at the daughter. She grabs a knife and look what she's doing. She is stabbing the crap out of him. Notice the robber with the gun has another employee in a headlock, but the first robber has been stabbed to Swiss cheese and he just wants to get the heck out of there while the daughter is chasing them both with the knife. Now, from what I understand, the robber who was stabbed showed up at the hospital in critical condition, and this allowed the police to catch them both, um, and they both are facing criminal charges. The daughter was found to have acted in self-defense and had no charges pressed. The gal you see sitting on the ground was the one in the headlock, and from what I understand, she was not harmed. She was perfectly fine. She was just really shook up from the experience. So let's go over some lessons. Now, I'm not sure why the jeweler can't hear the robbery going on. Uh, perhaps he had some headphones in. Now, I love that this, uh, this daughter of the owner tries to get behind a locked door. This is a smart tactical choice. Uh, she just isn't strong enough to get the door closed in time. She also had to spend a little extra time taking the key out of the door. Uh, otherwise, she might have actually been able to get it closed and locked before the bad guys got to her. Now notice how the jeweler has to go dig for his gun from the desk drawer. If he was carrying that on him, perhaps in an appendix holster, he could have drawn right then and there and ended the threat. I always recommend you keep your concealed carry handgun or any other weapon for that matter on your person at all times. Now I do understand there are situations or work conditions where you can't, but if you can, you really should. Another thing is if you're going to have a weapon, uh, a gun in this case, make sure you are very well trained with it. You need to be able to uh, be familiar with the controls, the use, the quick deployment of the weapon, and of course safety. Because in a panic, you're going to revert to your training. And if you aren't well trained, well, you're likely to fumble around as you see uh, him do in this video. Now you can see the lack of preparedness bite him in the butt. The attacker is now struggling with him over the gun. If the attacker was actually using that knife and stabbing the jeweler, uh, he would have been toast. This is why I tell people, carry your firearm with you with a round in the chamber, ready to go. Also, if you're this close, you, you definitely need some CQC close quarter skills, such as shit hit split, so that you can make space, so that you have the ability to draw and deploy your firearm. Now this gal, She's a boss. I mean, it takes some serious mental toughness to use a knife, you know, defensively to go after someone and actually stab them. And look at her go with this guy. I mean, she she clearly isn't trained, but that doesn't stop her from from tearing this guy up. So you know, mad kudos to her. I do want to draw your attention to the fact that she put this guy into critical care at the hospital. But notice how he was still had the ability to fight and flee. People are, are way tougher when their adrenaline is kicking in. It can take several minutes for even critical trauma wounds to impact um, the, the attacker as shown in, in, in this video and in several past videos that I put out. So um, the, you might stab someone, shoot someone, and you might still be in a fight for a couple minutes. Also, this attacker has a jacket and a motorcycle helmet on, which pretty much limits the knife attack options. Slashes likely are not going to penetrate the jacket sufficiently. And of course, the helmet's going to completely protect the face. It's going to make it kind of hard to get to the neck as well. So in this case, rapid stabbing or thrusting with the knife is, is what the doctor ordered or what the doctor's going to have to fix, which is exactly what this gal did. Now, with all due respect to fancy knife martial arts schools who are doing these complex series of targeting tendons and arteries, it just absolutely wouldn't work here. This untrained gal did better than most knife fighting schools would teach. I hate to say it. Another thing people often ask me about is non-lethal self-defense weapons, such as pepper spray, stun guns, mace, 
uh, etc. Well, in this particular case, those weapons would not have really worked here due to the coat and the helmet. They would have had very limited effectiveness. So just like in my last video, my number one self-defense weapon is always a concealed carry handgun followed by a knife in second place. Now notice the robber with the gun has, has the gun pointed at the jeweler. Uh, if that robber wanted him dead, he would have been dead. Uh, if that jeweler didn't believe in God before, uh, he might want to change his mind now. Now notice the jeweler is still messing with the gun, trying to get it ready. If he was properly trained and carrying the pistol on him, this whole mess could have likely been avoided. Um, he would have dropped the first attacker as he came through the door. Second attacker probably would have gotten the heck out of there, uh, just like he did as soon as he saw the first attacker get, get harmed. Look, uh, once again, if you're going to carry or have access to a firearm with the intention of protecting people and yourself, you must train with it. I see time and time and time again in these security camera videos where people are carrying uh, handguns and they don't know how to use it and they're fumbling around with it and they can't get it ready in time. You've got to train safety, quick deployment, and use of that firearm and accuracy, of course. Even if you're not a gun enthusiast, and, and, and I mean, I'm really not a gun enthusiast per se, I'm just a pragmatic self-defense guy and a firearm is the best tool for self-defense, period. No questions, no comments, that's it. Uh, and if, if my life depended on it, I'm, I'm trained and I'm ready. And I, I hope to God it never does. Okay, so the last thing I want to point out is the ferocity of the daughter and the impact it had on the other attackers. Uh, both the, the robber uh, with the knife and the one with the gun ran away because she went right at them. Now, of course, tactically, running at a man with a gun when you have a knife is not the smartest move. But I would like you to ponder the fact that they ran from her. When humans are in fight or flight mode, they don't really behave much differently than any other mammal. I mean, the wolverine makes the grizzly back down. The, the honey badger makes everything back down, right? Um, a man uh, acting fearless makes dogs back down. So it's, it's interesting food for thought. So folks, as always, uh, thanks for liking the video. Subscribe to see future videos. And if you want to become part of the warrior class, I recommend you go and find yourself a school that teaches reality-based martial arts. Get started right away. I'll see you next time.